Alisa here with Flow Live. So we are on episode three of our summer series on fleet telematics and asset management. Chen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Alisa, for having me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. It's going to be fun. All right, so we're looking forward to hearing your thoughts. So my first question here is video telematics seems like it has exploded overnight. Can you tell us a little bit about what's that market sizing look like? What sort of use cases are you seeing? Just give us a little bit of insight to get us started. Sure, Alisa. Sure, it's definitely Alisa. growing and growing very fast. There is an echo. Sure, Alisa. It's definitely growing and growing very fast. The video market telematics in terms of install base is expected to grow from 8.26 million units this year to 18.79 million by 2029. And that represents a CAGR of 17.9, almost 18% during the forecast period. Use cases you asked about. So use cases are continuously developing, and this is an incredibly interesting market to watch. Currently, video telematics are being used for driver safety and behavior monitoring, accident reconstruction, liability protection, fleet management and optimization, cargo and asset security, compliance and regulation, and customer and service experience. That's good. That's good. So let's talk about those use cases a little bit. You said they're continuously developing. Do you have any additional examples or can you expound on that a little bit? Primarily, we're going to see more and more advancement in video telematics through the integration of AI. Already, we're seeing some of this on the market applications of uh, advanced driver assistance system, ADAS. In this way, we're able to shift from reactive to proactive safety. I'll give an example. A fleet manager can train drivers not to not to drive distracted and uh, f enforce policies about cell phone use or eating or driving, right? Most of the times, vehicle video cameras are not streaming live video. That would be incredibly expensive. But cameras can be programmed to capture events and store the data for later review. But the driver can use a phone or grab a hamburger on the road and unless it causes them to do something to trigger the camera, like a slam down on the brake, suddenly swerve, this behavior is going to go undetected. But with AI-enabled video, if driver eyes avert from the road for too long, this is going to send an alert, and this event will not only be captured, but the driver will be warned in real time to focus on the road. AI can enhance not only safety, but also security with facial recognition for driver identification, authentication, and also anomaly detection in case of tampering. It can also help with the fleet asset management by scanning vehicles as they pass through predetermined geofences. Ultimately, AI is going to be an integral part uh, and fundamentally core to autonomous uh, vehicle applications. Such a good point. And I honestly, I think it's such an interesting use case. You know, I've read everything from, you know, the influences on insurance where it helps companies to reduce, you know, some of that litigation to even cargo monitoring weight and those those applications. So I just I think it's such an interesting uh, part of our market. So thanks yeah. for sharing. You a little know, bit about that. What, just think of a company that carries explosives, right? What level of regulation that they have to go through? what kind of security latency uh, and uh, regulation that they need to um, work through in order to uh, get the license and maintain it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's such a such an interesting use case. And then as they're crossing borders and it just, it can be so complicated. So tell me a little bit along that line where it comes to, you know, the different use cases, some of the complexities that a fleet manager could encounter as they're trying to utilize these new technologies? Well, what is needed in these solutions is a global reach. A global reach can be really globally or even within a continent where you need coverage everywhere, right? That's the essence of video telematics. We need to have the coverage, but coverage is not enough. You also need low latency, you need high throughput while maintaining regulatory requirements such as data privacy, permanent roaming restrictions, local data regulations, and more. While the wireless connectivity has been the traditional uh, choice of connectivity in these solutions, but as applications expand into mobile solutions, cellular connectivity will be the pre 
the preferred choice, no doubt about it, for any IP camera connectivity. And this adds great complexity due to the fragmented, uh, fragmented ecosystem of the network carriers. That's true, that's true. Well, and a lot of companies are still relying on roaming, aren't they, to you know, cross borders and hope that it, you know, permanent roaming doesn't interfere with them. So what are your thoughts on that and how they can overcome those sorts of challenges? Nice and uh, wishful thinking, but uh, unfortunately, at least roaming connectivity is not going to work uh, for these applications due to regulatory challenges as, as well as performance. Leveraging local connectivity helps to ensure that performance requirements such as low latency and high throughput can be met. Local connectivity also avoids any permanent roaming restrictions and it protects against throttling, so cameras can get the uplink bandwidth allocation that they need. Global connectivity at a local level supported by a distributed core network infrastructure is possible for a single provider. This is really good news. Multi-profile SIMs with automatic network selection for fallback and supporting multiple carriers can ensure that device never goes into the dark, no matter where they travel. I'm sure that's reassuring for not only for me to hear, but for our listeners out there as well who are looking to make their fleet solutions less complex and have a better um, global footprint for sure. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. We have some additional great sessions coming up, one on additional regulatory requirements and then diving deeper into the specific connectivity itself. So thank you again. We appreciate your time and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Alisa. Have a great day too.